welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. You are watching pretty much into the close here on February 2nd, 2016. And uh, one of the reasons I'm recording this now, sell side activity is back. So, you know, I did a, uh, I did a weekend video uh, on Sunday, in fact, and I was discussing on that kind of uh, weekend update there. What I saw in markets, uh, did a little bit more of that uh, yesterday, but a couple of things that I discussed have kind of come to fruition uh, almost immediately. And one of those specifically was, you know, the skew had kind of flattened out inside of the SPX. If you remember, we were looking at the uh, the skew symbol and I said, you know, it kind of looks like, hey, we've rallied back up. Let's reload. Let's head back to the downside. And that's exactly what we're seeing. After a day of rest yesterday, the S&Ps are headed back and under pressure and you can see a line drawn onto my screen now this happens to be none other than intraday trade and I'm, I'm filling trades here as i'm going into uh into the close obviously i'm i'm selling a little bit of premium and uh while i'm doing this video oh heck i might as well look at a couple of my working orders look at this captain one lot rides again but you know what apparently one lots do pay off because i'm having a, a decent down day this is what i call a uh this is a dawn kind of a day. Um, yeah, I like volatility. I like down days over here. But uh, as I was saying here, go back over to the charts, see this line drawn on my screen, and that line is indicative of none other than 1911. So this brings up something I talked about, not only in the Sunday video, but uh, yesterday. I had expectations that in the overnight trade, uh, and again, this is this is going back to just yesterday's video. I also did yesterday's video that we were going to trade an overnight back down to uh, 1911. And we did that. We traded right to 1911 in the overnight trade. We bounced off of it. And then we just, you know, uh, nicked it a couple of times and then crested through it. So here we are. So now you have to start thinking about, again, what's the other level that we saw? If we're going to have continuation to the downside, hey, once again, we could come back right into this 1871 kind of region over there, but it's still a little too early to tell. However, from last Friday, we had this monstrous up move, this 50 point up move in the S&P futures. We're giving back, okay, well beyond two thirds of that inside of today's trading session. And hey, granted, there's still six minutes to go. Anything can happen with six minutes to go. We're giving a lot of that back. Now let's point out a couple of things though that have changed from kind of some of the earlier uh, trade. One of those things, and probably the most intimidating thing that I've seen on my screen in a very long time, excuse me, what do the bonds seem to know that they haven't told the rest of us yet? Why are the bonds trading 163? If you asked me a week ago, a week ago, I was all primed to want to sell bonds at the 161 level. I make no two ways about it. I wanted to sell the bonds at 161. Then, okay, we see the last couple of days of trade. Did I sell the bonds at 161? No, because they shot up, okay, for apparently no reason other than Japan went to negative interest rates. The bonds moving like this, though, this is a bigger this is bigger than just the market selling off, okay? This is a kind of what I would call like a almost like a global duck and cover. You know, the amount of capital it takes to move bonds, you know, and again, this is this is two and twenty-three ticks. I mean, you're almost like a three point move in the bonds. Like if you look back at all these recent trading days, and we've had some wild trading days, right? You haven't seen a three point move to the upside of the bonds, have you? No, you haven't even seen close to that. In fact, you got to zoom out. You got to look back like nine months to start to see wild moves like this. And most of the wild moves were actually to the downside. So you better keep in mind the bonds. What do they seem to know that the rest of us have not yet figured out? Another area that I talked about over the weekend and yesterday a considerable amount was the pressure to the XLF. I saw the volatility in the XLF. It's been heated. Okay, make no two ways about it. The XLF is displaying considerable risk above and beyond none other than the S&P 500. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Apparently, the S&P 500 was right, okay, as was the, the volatility in the XLF. The XLF, okay, it's leading the way lower in terms of sectors. If you look at the XLF, it's down 2.7% today, where the S&Ps are only down 1.8%. Not even the NASDAQ is keeping up with how ugly the 
what the financials happen to be. And that's exactly what I was talking about the past couple of days, how the volatility in the financials just seemed inordinately high. Well, it doesn't seem inordinately high now. We're getting almost a 60 cent move, and it's been a long time since we've seen the XLF move okay, quite this much. So volatility is bubbling up everywhere over there. So XLF backing off in a big way. The risk, apparently, all right, it's right. Last but definitely not least in today's uh, video here is uh, we're going to look a little bit at none other than the XLE because yesterday I was looking for the XLE to back off. Today, it's backed off. Now, I'm trying to get out of my XLE trade. I have not yet filled, not yet filled. Uh, you know, just the other day, I purchased this 58.56 spread. I'm trying to exit it for a profit today. I'm taking it off a little bit early. If I can make 50% on that position in a very, very short amount of time, and sometimes it's just better to look at positions like I am, okay? Just look at positions in terms of like P&L over here. It's up 43%. But it's only been on, again, for, you know, what, a handful of days. I actually put mine on on Friday. Many of you saw that. And I'm trying to bail out of it Okay, just a few days later. Again, this is like Captain One Lot Strikes again. But you got to be realistic. Take the profitability when you're afforded the ability to do so. With a minute and 30 seconds left, it doesn't look like I'm going to be filling on the XLE trade. So... The big question is, let's not look at any victories we've had. Where do we go from here? This, this is actually one of the most indecisive areas that I've been in in a long time in the marketplace. We're in an extremely precarious kind of area. If you take a look at you know, the S&Ps, they're right at 1900. I mean, the flip of a coin, we go either direction. We might see a little resistance at what? 1911 or we're going to trade right back down to what that seven you know the 1871 level the Russell which has been really weak throughout today's trade apparently though not as weak as both the Nasdaq and uh, and none other than of course the financials but the Russell actually touched down to the 1000 level and recovered from it okay based on you know I'm going to go with the not only you know what I see on the screen but a little bit of instinct what what I'm going to give you here is that based on what I'm seeing in the markets, if you do not, if you don't see those bonds back off in the next day or two, meaning that the bonds themselves, the ZB, they don't sell off, you know, a couple of points, point or two at most in the next few days, we could be in for some of the most serious selling that we've seen at any point, okay? Up until this point, meaning that, you know, this could actually, we could be on the verge of a much more serious sell side activity. There's the bell uh, up until any point that we've seen. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm left to believe with the bonds. It's, you know, the bonds, professional traders moving, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in these products. In fact, between the bonds and the ZN, we're talking billions and billions of dollars of liquidity have been moving into these products over here. I often say, you know, the bonds, they, uh, they don't lie. They don't lie. And the world right now is moving into the bonds. It's, you know, a risk aversion type position. Nevertheless, the S&Ps are going to close right under the 1900 level. Uh, again, be very, very cautious. Earnings right now, it doesn't matter. You know, I say earnings doesn't matter. Like, well, what about Google? Yeah, Google was up 50 bucks. It was up 50 bucks overnight trade. It opened at 810. It's only up 10 bucks in the day. It looks like no other day. Earnings doesn't matter. Throw it out the window. Okay. Amazon, slippery slope over here. Stopped pretty much at 550. Didn't go below it. But again, the entire market is, is right on that verge of some much larger sell side activity. And I'm basing that on predominantly this bond trade over here. I'm less inclined right now to even look at the volatility, which is doing nothing more than just reacting to the fact that the markets went down. With that, again, keep your wits about you the next couple of days, all right? We're a coin flip away from some massive, massive moves in markets over here. And to to get very directional, I think, is, is not the right way to go. This is a premium seller's kind of market. For the next three days in the SPX, we're still expecting upwards of a $35 move. With that, okay, I will be back later this week. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us here at Theotrade. I am Don Kaufman. See you in the chat room tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.